So what happened last night was you saw um, the establishment coalesce uh, around a candidate who was going to squash workers. Right. That's Joe Biden. So that's what happened. The establishment coalesced around. To, and remember what well, we've always said, the Democratic Party's first order of business is to defeat the candidate who represents workers. And then and only then are they allowed to try to defeat Donald Trump. And if they don't, that's no big deal, because the most important thing, what their donors want more than anything, is to defeat the candidate who represents workers. And that's why we have a one party state. OK, because the donor class uh, is OK with Donald Trump. They're not OK with Bernie Sanders. Neither are the Democrats. So that's why you have a one party state, which is what we're really living in. And it's all run by the same donors. So here, let's give you the rundown. So here we are. Uh, Super Tuesday primary results by state. Now, they, they thought that Bernie Sanders was going to run away with Super Tuesday before the establishment coalesced. They, he was predicted to win eight states. He won four. I think he lost. He lost. Did he lose Maine? Where's Maine? Is it in yeah, yet? Yeah, I think they called. He Maine lost for Maine, Biden. which was supposed to be easy. Yeah. Um. So Biden wins uh, Alabama, Arkansas, Maine. There it is, right? Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Texas. Of course, C one Texas. They closed all the polling places in the in yeah. the poor neighborhoods. Did they not do that? People were waiting for seven seven hour, hours. Seven hours. Yeah. Like uh, every and so and and again, I just want to tell you you're one the, quick you're the fact Bernie Jimmy. Sanders campaign. You don't know that they're going to do that in Texas. You don't have a ground game to make sure that they can't do that. And when they start closing polling places, you don't immediately send out emails or whatever alerts to your media people to highlight this. What's going on? So everybody knows that they're cheating you again. They're not doing that. Well, they fought it here in California, but it still wasn't enough. Well, like, I mean, they fought it to a bit and they got some of them open till 10, but it still wasn't enough. And then eventually they were just like, we're closing. I mean, how Sorry. do they let this? How do you let this happen where they just get to close polling places before the election? You, they do it every time. And you guys don't have a response. I don't know what the response should be. I'm a fucking comedian. Hmm. This is what you guys do for a living. You have almost unlimited resources. You're the biggest fundraiser. Anyway. OK, so uh, again. All right, so here, let's Can just... Can I just add one yes. more detail that it's, according to uh, HuffPost, it's called Texas officials have already rigged the 2020 election, Super Tuesday, and they highlight how between 2012 and 2018, that in Texas, over 542 polling sites over that span had been closed. And so how is that okay? And so, and how does that, how does the Sanders campaign not make that a major issue? Again, uh, <laughs> This is maddening. Uh, uh, if this is maddening, they're cheating him right out in the open again. Uh, and if Bernie had been doing what we had been urged again, they're never going to do this. We, we again, we told the left stop doing RussiaGate. They're going to use it against you. They're doing it. The left still doesn't give a fuck. Stop trying to anyway. Well, you want to talk about collusion. Let's talk about collusion. Yeah. Here's some collusion that happened. The DNC, the Buttigieg campaign, the Klobuchar campaign, the Biden campaign, and Beto O'Rourke all the, got together to co uh, collude against Bernie Sanders. Oh, and Liz Warren, by the way. That's and right. And Liz Warren. And Liz Warren. And Mike Bloomberg. I mean, they're all in. Mike Bloomberg's the establishment, quote, outsider. We'll see if he catches. And if he doesn't, all the momentum's going to Biden. And we need Liz Warren in the fold to take votes away from Bernie. It's collusion. You want to talk about collusion? That's collusion. But I thought it was the Russians, Ron, that was the ones messing with our election. Now, we're not supposed to be afraid of Russia? Well. So here is the California primary. Now, they still, this is the latest we could give you. So Bernie's going to win it uh, with 33%. So, but only 80, this is 90% precincts reporting. Uh, Bernie should actually pick up some more delegates. This is the, what they're talking about, the exit polling from Massachusetts. Sanders had 30%, Biden 28%. So and then what happened in Texas? So some people are saying that this is in the margin of error. So this isn't a real thing. Well, well it's still early. So I guess people will, uh, you know, they'll be will do some more investigation and we'll bring you that when it comes. But uh, do you remember when we told Bernie Sanders what he should be doing? Well, Tulsi Gabbard is doing that. And what that is is that he should have been running full blast against the goddamn establishment. Yes. Hey, let me ask you a question, Bernie, and Bernie's advisors. How did that unity tour work out for you? 
How did that unity tour work out for you? Why did you go on a unity tour with the Democratic Party? Did you think that there was ever amount of ass kissing to the establishment in the DNC that was going to make them let you fucking be president if you won the votes? Did you ever think that? Yes, I guess so. Why else would you go on a fucking unity tour? So this is Bernie's fatal flaw. Uh, this is, you know, Bernie's, the, you know, people say, well, you got to have an inside and an outside game. And Bernie's the inside game. Well, I guess the way the gears work for Bernie is that they're just doomed to lose because he won't fight the way he's supposed to. If he had been calling out the Democratic Party shenanigans from the beginning and he's going to say, you watch, they're all going to come together to cheat me. They're all going to how are they going to do it this time? I don't know exactly how, but you watch, they're going to do it and they're going to do it in collusion with the media. They're going to do it in collusion with the DNC. They're going to do it in conclusion with the billionaire class. And when he, if he would have said that from the beginning and when they booed him at the, the base, he would have said, this is your donor class booing me and I don't want their money. That's why they're booing me. If you would have set that up, now when this happens, everybody would be like, oh, he's right. This is it. They're doing it. But since he can't running around talking about how he's good friends with Tom Perez and he's good friends with fucking Hillary Clinton and he's good friends with, with Joe Biden, how everybody's his buddy in the Democratic Party instead of the problem, which is what the Democratic Party is. If he would have been doing that, now when this happens, everyone in the country or a lot more people would be like, oh, my God, it's happening just like they said it would happen. They are screwing the guy who represents workers and doesn't take corporate money. How you could be losing to a guy who takes all the corporate money in the world in an anti-establishment era that elected Donald Trump because they thought he wasn't bought. Is, be, is a bad strategy. The why, why you are losing to Joe Biden is because of bad strategy. Here it is. And again, we're 100, and I just want to say to all those, and I've been saying this for a while, Joe Biden, he's got to stop saying Joe Biden is his friend. This is horrible strategy. He's got to take the gloves off and he's got to go right at these guys. And when I did that, a bunch of bad faith actors on the quote unquote left attacked me saying I was attacking Bernie Sanders. And now, you know, those guys are fucking dick riding full of shit motherfuckers who don't know their asshole from a hole in the ground. Because now everybody today is now saying what the Jimmy Dore show has been saying since the start of this fucking campaign, that Bernie's got to take the goddamn gloves off and enough with this my friend Joe fucking Biden shit. And he's got to call out the establishment Democratic Party constantly because that's what this is. And he's got to talk about their collusion with the establishment corporate media. And every time he opens his mouth, he should talk about that, about how he doesn't take their money and Joe Biden does. He's not doing it. Just so you know, Bernie's not doing it. They didn't run one negative ad on Joe Biden in any of these fucking... Uh, Super Tuesday states. Now that is political malfeasance. His advisors are committing malpractice. I know some of them. They're nice people. They don't have the, whatever it takes, it ain't happening. Because this is the shittiest strategy. Bernie should be wiping the floor with a piece of shit like Joe Biden. Joe Biden can't even speak a sentence. And so it's good to see the rest of the left uh, finally coming around to realizing that you can't play footsies with the establishment because they're going to crush you anyway. And all those fucking bad faith actors who came at me and used me, uh, rode my dick for clicks and likes on Twitter. Well, now everybody sees who the fuck you really are. Okay, so um, guess what? Bernie Sanders not stopping. This is from the L.A. Times. Sanders took a fresh aim at Biden for accepting campaign contributions from billionaires and corporate interests, but he said he did not want the contest between them to get into mudslinging. That's not mudslinging, though. That's not mudslinging. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like like they say, oh, well, we, we don't want this to be about personal attacks. It's not personal attacks to play something that Joe Biden said about the crime bill and how proud of it he was and then play the fact that you were against all that. That's not a personal attack. That's a fact. That's a strategic uh, disagreement that they had back in 1994 that's still relevant today. That's not a personal attack. And playing that video would be very smart by the campaign. Agreed. I like Joe. Bernie's still saying this today. 
Still saying this today, Ron. I like Joe. Joe is a decent guy. Joe Biden is not a decent guy. Joe Biden is an enemy of the fucking people, and he always has been. Talk about the bankruptcy bill. Talk about his Iraq war vote. How decent do you have to be to go along with the Iraq war? Uh, I like Joe. Joe is a decent guy, and I do not want this campaign to degenerate into Trump-type epic where we are attacking each other. Again, not attacking. This is a goddamn campaign, Bernie. I don't know if you know. I know you've won campaigns, and I've never won a campaign. So I I'm sure you know better than me how to win a campaign, and you know this is a way to lose one, right? <clears throat> this is how you lose a campaign. Right now, you're losing to Joe Biden. Think about that. You are losing to a guy who can't complete a fucking full sentence. Why don't you start with that? I like Joe. It's too bad he can't complete a full sentence. Why don't you just say it? Obviously, Joe's having early onset dementia. Have you seen him try to speak? Why wouldn't you say that? What do you got to lose? He's beating you. Joe Biden is fucking beating you. And Joe Biden doesn't have any policies that are going to help None. the people. Not one thing. So when thing. it goes on to say he's he has ideas. He's your fucking friend. Right. And he goes on to say that is that is the last thing this country wants. Joe has his ideas. He doesn't have any ideas. What the fuck is this? His record, his vision for the future, and I have mine. But a senior Biden aide took umbrage at the new negative ad Sanders is airing, saying they were reminiscent of the kinds of attacks he lobbed at his unsuccessful 2016 primary fight against Hillary Clinton, which some Democrats believe left wounds that contributed to Trump's victory. Who the flip cares? What the fuck? You're not allowed. You, you mean talking about someone's history? Yes. Talking yeah. about their voting history? Talking about their policies? Running a campaign. About... That's what they mean. Run, you can't run a campaign. Yeah. But Joe Biden can. And everybody else in the world can say anything they want about Bernie. Like that maybe they'll execute him in the park. Or maybe that he's a secret Russian. Or that he's going to lose every down ballot rate. They're going to lose the House. And, the Senate, and everything is going to be fucked for decades because of Bernie Sanders might run for president. If Joe Biden got a dime every time he brought up the fact that Bernie only has a D minus from the NRA and not an F. Right. And if he got a dime for every time he just lied about the numbers on Medicare for all, he wouldn't even need to take corporate money. He'd be set on his own if he got a dime for every he's, time he did that. That's the only talking point he actually gets straight. Um. We've seen what kind of campaign Bernie Sanders runs, and we saw the impact it had in 2016. Kate Bennington, Biden's de campaign manager, said, deputy campaign manager, said, said in a conference call with reporters. So let me just, again, I'll give a little bit of advice to the Sanders campaign they're not going to take. They're going to say this about you, whether you campaign against Joe Biden or not. No matter what you say about Joe Biden, you could say Joe Biden should be the winner, and they're going to say, why are you attacking him? You could go out and say Joe Biden's the greatest guy in the world. They're going to say, why are you being so divisive? Just like they're going to call you a socialist, just like they called Obama a socialist and Clinton a socialist and Dukakis a socialist and Mondale a socialist and Carter a socialist. They're going to call you a socialist. So you might as well just do what's fucking right anyway. They're going to say you're attacking Joe Biden, so you might as well fucking attack him. Stop calling him your friend, you fucking knuckleheads. I, honest to God, I, I you know... Uh, well, I don't want to make it personal about Bernie's advisors. He's, he's got, they're great on policy. They're great on policy. They're our shit strategists. They've been shit strategists from the beginning. They throw everybody who's their loudest supporter fucking under a bus at the drop of a hat. They show no fucking leadership in that regard. They show no loyalty. They lose support when they throw somebody under the bus because people like people who show loyalty and strength. And again, this is weak. You keep complimenting Joe for being a decent guy. That is bad strategy. That is fucking weak. And it's nice to see the rest of the left finally coming around to that point of view, a point of view we've had at the Jimmy Dore show since the beginning of this campaign. I, I like how they say we saw the impact the campaign had in 2016. What, you mean a bunch of people woke up? Yeah. A bunch of people were like, hey, yeah, this is the future we need. It started a movement that that's 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 a negative impact, according to the Biden campaign. Yeah. Oh, a bunch of people, a bunch of people wanted something better from their politics. And I have to say this whole mythology that uh, Bernie Sanders attacks or Bernie Sanders is somehow um, 
mean. As a mean-spirited kind of campaign. Who was the I, guy who said Hillary? I don't buy it. Yeah, Hillary, I'm tired of hearing about your damn emails. That was Bernie that right. did that. He kept it on policy. How much of a gentleman was he on that debate stage every time he met with Hillary Clinton? It was amazing. So, you know, I think the people, when you read this article, something like this in the L.A. Times, I think the people who wind to believe this bullshit will believe the bullshit. I think the people who have critical thinking skills look at this and are skeptical. And so why is Biden so rivaled by Bernie? Because Bernie's right on the policies and Biden is flawed, deeply flawed. And he is he's. He's not there. He is completely not together. And it will be a humiliation if the Democrats put him on stage against Donald Trump. That's a humiliation. And that is going to help devolve our country. It's This is awful. I still don't understand Minnesota. I don't accept the uh, uh, what happened in Texas at all. I, I have suspicions about that. And uh, The people were in line in Texas three hours after the polls had closed. Yes. People were still in line in Texas three hours. That's how you suppress the vote. Yes. That's how you suppress the vote. And suppressing the vote is uh, going to favor the power structure. Hey, everybody. The next live Jimmy Dore show is May 1st in Minneapolis. And then we're going to Chicago. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets to all our live shows. And become a premium member at JimmyDoreComedy.com slash join. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Thanks for your support.